Uh, Nick was telling us that uh, his CEO is from uh, El Paso, Texas. So th I'm Samson Williams. We're at Coinvention 2019. Uh, we're here to talk to Nick from Teller. Um, Nick, before we get into your previous employers and what you used to do at the Commodities and Future Trade Commission, aka the CFTC, what does Teller do in a nutshell? Uh, so Teller is a decentralized oracle on Ethereum. Uh -huh. To break that down for people and what that actually means. To the humans, talk to the humans. Sure. What, what uh, is it? Whenever you, so there's smart contracts on Ethereum. So you, you can think of Maker, which is a stable coin, or a contract that says you want to, say, bet on the price of oil. They need the price of off-chain information. So you need something to tell you the price of oil. And right now on blockchain networks, there's no way to actually go and get that data. You can't just query the internet on one uh -huh. of these systems. So you actually need to build an oracle to go do this for you. And that's what we do. We allow smart contracts to query off-chain data so they can have uh, execution of their contract. Okay. So this makes sense in my head, but I'm, I've been drinking the blockchain Kool-Aid for sure. a moment. So we're going to break this down for the, some of the folks who are watching of how Teller actually makes revenue. Um, I love what you said because I assume that you learned your skill set at the CFTC. Maybe. Uh, Maybe? <laughs> so I was, I was an economist there and you know I think that's the big piece of, of Teller that sort of helps makes, makes uh -huh. it special and, and really all the blockchain systems. It's, it's how do you sort of bake in these ec economic incentives to make the whole system work. Mm -hmm. So for Teller, uh, whenever you have somebody who goes and gets that off-chain information and brings it back, you know, you could just have one guy do it, Yeah. but that's centralized. You don't want that. You don't want that one guy who's in charge of it because then he can lie. So what we do is we use like the Bitcoin model. Well, how about we have people compete to go and get the data and bring it back on chain? How do you scrub for data quality or how do you ensure data, data quality? So it, it's just what the community thinks it is. So we have a, a mechanism for disputing the value and then for voting on whether or not it was So correct. you use a community consensus type mechanism? Um, a lot of eyes on the on the uh, data itself, like Wikipedia, sort of. Right. Well, you know, same with like like Bitcoin. You know, the ultimate security of Bitcoin is that Bitcoin is sort of what the community says it is. It, you know, you can sort of fork off at any point and, and continue along those paths. Like, and that's what we built into Teller is, you know, what the community says is the correct value is the correct value. So we have we actually have proof of work mining. You go and put it on chain, and then we can tell you the community gets to decide whether or not that's a valid answer. So the, the you crowdsource your mining? Yeah. Is that, am I capturing this correctly? Well, I think like all mining is necessarily crowdsourced, uh -huh. you know, uh, it's just free for anybody to do. Um, and then you, you compete to do it. And then that's sort of how decentralization happens. It's because uh -huh. it's, you're incentivized, a bunch of people are incentivized to do this thing that actually provides value. So they're just being selfish and trying to go after the coins that we mint every block. Yeah. But what they're, you know, they're actually providing value to the network by doing this. So uh, where, when I want to find more about Teller, where do I go look at? Uh, Teller.io. Teller.io. Because I want to talk about how Teller, the business now, is functioning. What does it look like? What's your roadmap? What's your vision? Sure. So how we actually make money is that we have a dev share. So uh -huh. with each of those mined blocks on our system, we get 10% of the tokens. So this is similar to the Zcash Decred model, okay. where you just, the, the company gets some of the reward. And we felt that this was actually a little bit more honest than doing an ICO up front. So, you know, we started with a zero token. Are ICOs not honest? Is that the implication you're making here, man? It is definitely the implication. <laughs> you know, just the, the incentives for actually building and launching a product are all wrong. Oh, you want to have, have a product and you want to actually build it? That sounds crazy, guy. Yeah, so we, we launched in August, actually. Uh -huh. Started with a zero token supply and mined it into existence. So there are only 300,000 as of, you know, we're almost two months in and we're just continuing to, to grow from there. I love it. This is, this is really helping paint a picture of what Teller.io is up to because you're saying you didn't ICO, you didn't STO, you didn't IEO, you didn't token no. generating event. <laughs> uh, am I missing any of them? Oh, yeah. digital security offering. You didn't do any of those acronyms? No, you know, we, we wanted to we wanted to sort of be honest with the community. We wanted to, to have it to where we're incentivized to build it long term because, you know, like even let's say you can make a, a million bucks or something up front. Yeah. Like we actually believe in this. So we, we think that, you know, you can grow this into a really large network where people are actually using our Oracle to 
to feed DeFi contracts, to feed all of these derivatives contracts that are going to be put on chain. Interesting. You built a real product, rolled it out, and said, come use it. I, I call that the field of dreams model. Right. So that's very interesting. Um, no, I love the fact, so I, I wanted you to give us your 30 seconds on what I call crowdfunding, everyone else calls ICO, from a business perspective, just I want, why didn't you guys do an ICO? Well, I mean, regulatory issues aside, uh -huh. you know, it, it just doesn't, one of the big things with a lot of cryptocurrencies, you know, we have a governance model baked into ours. The community of, of teller holders is what decides what a great value is. And a lot of these other protocols as well, they have governance pieces built in. Mm -hmm. So who holds your token actually matters. If you, if you sell off on an ICO to a bunch of people who could care less about your project, who are not going to be voting in your protocol, mm -hmm. that's not a good thing for the future of your protocol. Yeah. You know, if, if they're going to be holding them on, on exchanges, they're not going to be holding them in their own wallet. That, that all you don't want to give me an 80% discount so I can dump them the, neck, the day they hit an exchange? Right, you dump them and now you have a bunch of bag holders who are holding your token, <laughs> you know. So, the technical term for that is shit coins. You're holding a bag of shit. Right. So, you know, a lot of projects in the space, like, you know, besides the whole corrupt model of, you know, you pre-sell to early VCs and then you, you dump on an exchange. How are we supposed to pump and dump if we don't pre-sell? Right. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's sort of sad that the space has come to that. And, uh -huh. you know, like, like you were saying before, like I used to work as a regulator and the regulators want nothing more than to stay out of this. Yeah. <laughs> like... Trust me, they, don't, they do not want to open this whole bag of worms. The regulators but, are like, oh man, that's some Pandora box shit, let's not do that. Right, I mean, it, it just, it breaks every one of the rules written when you try and like fit these things in. So uh -huh. they don't want to touch it, they don't want to have to deal with it, so quit giving them reasons to. You know, quit, quit going out there and doing scams that have people want to go to regulators and complain. You know, if you had, like if every project didn't do an ICO, you know, was completely honest about launching their project, I think the regulators would be completely out of it because, you know, th there wouldn't really be a whole lot of issues. Um, usually the regulators, especially now, the ones that they've gotten in on, they've been obvious scams and they've been reported by other people in the crypto community. So, so Teller.io, they have a crazy business model. It looks very similar to Bitcoin because Bitcoin didn't ICO. Uh, I didn't STO or any of the acronyms. Uh, Satoshi built it and was like, hey, who wants to play in my sandbox? Sure. And so Teller has a very similar business model, correct me if I'm wrong, where you're building it, you're saying we're skipping all the regulatory hurdles because we're pushing out a product. If you want to engage with our smart conscience, stable coins, you can be part of our community, but you have to take that step to join us. Right, you, you can go use our smart contracts right now. If you have a smart contract on Ethereum, if you want to request the price of ETH US dollar, price of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. any price on into your smart contract, we can do that for you. And awesome, awesome. Cool. Well, Nick, thank you very much for letting you ask you some tough questions. <laughs> I have some opinions about smart contracts and stable coins, but I get what you're using them for, sure. so I appreciate that. I encourage everyone to take a moment, check out teller.io, check out their product. Apparently, you can download it or interact with it right now today. And so if you have any bugs or issues, Nick, what's your email so they can get in contact with you? Uh, nfet at teller.io. Hit them up, nfet, F-E-T-T? F-E-T-T. F-E-T-T. Like Boba. Like what? Like Boba Fett. Oh, Boba Fett. He's a Star Wars. Go. We're going to talk about that next off, off, off <laughs> the camera. So Nick Fett at teller.io if you have any issues or additional questions. I look forward to witnessing your rise and thanks for being on. Thanks. Awesome. Bye-bye.